So welcome back to the shop, friends. Today we're going to be making a traditional Swedish butter knife. So this is a traditional Swedish butter knife and breadboard. This is one of the many traditions, Scandinavian traditions that Mrs. W brought to the family and something that I think is really charming and that we use a couple times a day. Everyone has their own. Uh, it's just, it's really nice. And so uh, how we use it is, uh, of course, to butter, put butter on toast or bread. You, the Swedes eat a lot of bread, they eat a lot of cheese, and to, to take this little individual breadboard uh, with your own butter knife is kind of cool. Uh, so they come in all different shapes and sizes. These are just some old ones. I think this is one that I made maybe years ago. So I thought we would make one of these today. These, this little combination right here, I'll show you how to present it real nicely at the end. Uh, it makes a wonderful little gift. So the first thing we need to decide on is what we're gonna use for material. My goodness, we've got so many choices to make here. These are little, uh, all sorts of scraps of wood, all sorts of species. We've got some fur here. We've got some hickory. Looks like we've got some oak, more hickory, uh, maple. Look at the walnut. Walnut's always really nice. I think the majority of the ones that we have are all made out of walnut. We've got, um, what is this one here? That looks, that's a, look at that. That's a beautiful piece of walnut right there. It's got some grains in it. And we've got here is maple. I think maybe maple. I like the light wood. So this is the one I've chose. We're gonna do a little piece of maple. So this is the pattern that I've always went off, but we're not gonna do that today. We're going to do, we're gonna see if we can't spice this up a little bit, make it even cooler. So we've got, uh, but I wanna keep this, this shape, this length is very nice, but we can do better. Uh, or Americans, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we think we can do better anyway. Uh, okay, so we're going to say seven, seven and a, man, I probably shouldn't have said that. Seven and a half. Uh, I'm going to add a half inch on there, so let's cut this at eight inches. It is a cold and rainy day out there. I've got so many projects that I want to take out and share with you guys, but it's just been raining for a week. But we're supposed to, at the first of December, we're supposed to have um, some snow coming in. So we're hoping for that and we can get out and, and uh, start having some more fun. But uh, boy, what a blessing to have a nice warm shop to work in and, and a nice cup of coffee. So I'm gonna be using uh, traditional tools, meaning uh, no power tools, we'll just be using hand tools. But if you wanna uh, follow along, don't, don't, feel don't feel like you need to do that. If you've got a bandsaw or table saw, Man, use it. All right, here we go. Seven and a half inches. That's where we'll start with our stock, and then we're gonna have to have to make a uh, plane it all down and get it ready. Table saw would make short work of this, but so so does a Japanese pole saw. This maple is rough sawn, and right off the sawmill, you can see it is not flat. We need a flat side. This one's even worse. So let's get a flat side, and then we can measure and uh, cut our stock out. Here's even a better perspective. If you look at this, if you sight down these, can you sight down these and see? Gives you kind of an idea how far off, how far off those are. If you're working from a rough sawn piece of wood that doesn't have a flat side on it, uh, you can use a, an ancient method called winding sticks where you take two sticks that are flat on one side and you put them at each end and then you can sight down them. And you sight down them to tell, you can tell immediately how much twist that you have in the stock. We'll rip our stock now to seven eighths of an inch. So here's our finished piece of stock, the maple. We've got it down, uh, plain down to seven eighths uh, thickness. You can see here from the traditional handle, this is a lot thicker. And there's a reason for that here that will all come clear in a minute. Uh, you can see here we have our size. So if you wanted to go with a, with a pattern or something, you know, right there you have what you need and you can trace that once you make something you like um, and then reuse it over and over again. But we're gonna start from scratch. I have something beautiful in my mind. You're going to need something to make a radius. A compass, of course, uh, is the best. If you don't have a compass, I didn't have any for a long time, and I used a, uh, 
um, a pair of scissors and <laughs> I'd tape a pencil on it, uh, but a compass like this here uh, that we'll use and that we're gonna, the radius that we're gonna wanna make is gonna be about 12 inches. This is going to be beautiful. Okay, so we'll start in the middle and what we want on the back side is we just want a, ra a radius. A very nice radius. I'm saying that radius is gonna be about, it's not 12 inches, probably closer to 10. Something like this. Okay, now this here, a more comfortable handle, similar to the handle that I made for Jack's, Jack's um, hatchet. Now this is gonna come up and be, this is a, a radius here, and this is gonna be pretty delicate right there. It's gonna be pretty thin. Something like this. Okay, change it up a little bit. I don't want, I don't want those hard straight lines. That doesn't look good. It doesn't look organic or nice. So what we've got is we've got, this is round. I want to look kind of like, like a leaf. So we have this going like this here, and this on the back side here, then this here also. We have this curve, so we need this to come in nicely here and then down. So this is, it's very, it comes to a point, but everything is, is round and everything is proportionate there. That looks, that looks good, that's where it's at. So to cut this out, we'll use our, our coping saw. If you have a, a jigsaw, Band saw that would work better, but if you don't, you need to cut curves, and we can use our course, use our coping saw. So here's our final shape. That is nice, isn't it? I've always felt that these butter knives weren't great for spreading. The shape of it, I just wasn't great, wasn't as good. And I like to have a, I want to, maybe it's. Maybe Americans want to get everything done so quickly that we always design tools to do, to do that. <laughs> Maybe we should take a little bit more time and enjoy the process than uh, that's probably something to that. Anyway, this is going to be uh, the design that I came up with. I think that that looks cool. Isn't that nice? I think it's going to fit nice in the hand and uh, be able to dip out of there and brush that. So we're going to have a full thickness handle. That's the why I wanted this stock to be so thick. Uh, was so it's a comfortable handle you know, quite a bit thicker than this one here. Uh, that's very nice and, and it feel, fits good in the hand. And then uh, this will be, of course, go down to a thin taper. Quarter inch thickness for our rough cut. And then we can, that'll give us plenty to come down to our point with. So I've traced that out there. The middle, we'll go to the middle. And so we'll rough cut this out with our saw. Sometimes I find those on hardwood, those ripping teeth are just too coarse. And I'll use the cross cut teeth. So here's our rough shape, uh, you can see. So left a quarter inch right here with the saw. That'll give us plenty of room to carve. We'll have a little bit thicker back on it just for strength because this is a little delicate right there. You can use any sort of knife you like to do this carving. It doesn't so much matter. I, th I think that since we're, we're doing a, a Scandinavian type of project, you'd want to use a Scandinavian knife. Um, something like a more of a bushcrafting knife, a knife that has a, a Scandinavian grind on it is always great uh, for this sort of tool. This, my John Deering knife here that he made for me, I actually keep that in my wood shop. I use it more in here than I do anywhere else. Here's some traditional Swedish knives. I don't know if you've seen these or not before. I, I bought these when I was in Sweden last time. And a couple of these, these are made by Mora. And this is what they use to carve the Dalahest, Dalahest, Dalahest horses, the little traditional classic Swedish horses. And what's really nice is this was $4. It was a handmade birch bark sheath. Oh, I wish I would have got even the, the man who uh, built it had his initials and everything on there. I wish I would have bought more of these. They are just delightful. Uh, but isn't that a great sheath for a carving knife? So we'll, uh, or you, even these type. I use these flex cuts here. These are kind of nice too for real hard work, but maybe a combination of three, but you can do everything. I'll do everything here with the, with the traditional bushcrafting knife. So I spared you the half hour of carving and sanding there, but that's what we came up with compared to the original. Which one do you like better? Man, this feels so good in the hand. I wish someone would make me a knife like that. <laughs> Perfect. So I, I could just carved out the rough, uh, the rough shape of it uh, with the uh, bushcraft knife there. 
can see those 45s in there. And then, um, and then sanded everything smooth. 60, 150, and then finished up with 220. But we're not done yet. We're gonna do the best part next. That looks good though, doesn't it? A nice, it'd be good for spreading on toast. It's nice and wide. You can get it in the butter dish. Man, we might be onto something right there. Left the, uh, tried to leave kind of the rough carving shape a little bit. You can see there on that backside. Maybe you can there. Can we focus here? There we go. I like that. I like it. Things, when you grab it and say, okay, that's not machine made. Machines can't, can't duplicate that. Only, only, uh, only people can. We are going to stain the handle. Handle only. Handle only. Stain the handle with a traditional uh, Swedish green color right there. So I'm gonna use some frog tape. So for the handle, we're gonna use some traditional gre Swedish green, traditional Swedish green stain made in Germany. Oh, the best of both worlds, you know it's gonna be good. Oh, look what I've done. We have a green bench here. That's a beautiful color. Just gorgeous, timeless color. Always looks good. Looked good a hundred years ago. Looks just as good today. Stick with the classics. To apply our stain, I'm just gonna use a, a foam brush and, and we're not gonna use very much, especially by the handle. What I'll do is, um, oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? We're gonna put three coats on. So get it around, once you get the brush, you know, pretty well soaked into the brush and it's not dripping, then I'll go in and, and very lightly I'll work that handle. Let's do a clean line there. Not too much. We're gonna, we don't want to, uh, to, uh, that to run. Oh man, what a nice color. What a nice color. When we were, last time we were in Sweden, we went to the little, um, oh, is it, I don't know what a Providence is, kind of like their states of, uh, I believe it's called Mura, where they make the, uh, the Dala horses, the Dala Hest, and it's on a lake. And it was beautiful. It was well, it's beyond beautiful. Sweden is such a nice country. Uh, but the thing that stuck out to me was the uh, all the houses are painted the same color out there, and they're all red, kind of a traditional barn red. And so what you and it's uh, you know unlike what we do here in America with our urban sprawl and because we have so much space, you know things are spread out so far. Uh, there, you you know, like in Germany or Austria, you drive in the, you know drive through the country into the forest. Then you come to a little town where everyone lives, and then it opens up again into the country. And then you drive a little bit, and you you come to the next town. It's really it's actually quite charming. It's it's so nice. And then when you you know when you are in a town, you can walk to everything. You know, life is about the the detail for me. There's always, you know, some people, a lot of people don't understand that and they'll be the first ones to say, oh, what do you, you know, what do you go to all the trouble of this for? You know, and, and I guess my response is, is that life is not always about utility. There's a time for utility, but there's also for a time, a time for things that make you happy when you look at them, things that are beautiful. And they're so, I guess the thing, things that are truly beautiful in life are so few and far in between whenever we can create them and incorporate them into our lives, then I think we should, even, even one thing as, as simple as this. If it, for, for a few mornings, every morning when you pick this up and you look at it and you use it and you enjoy it, if it makes you happy, or it gives you a, a little bit of pleasure or joy, is it not worth it? See how that, Frog tape did for our clean edges. Oh, look at that, that's nice. Isn't that beautiful? Nice clean edges, that's exactly what I wanted. I'll keep you in frame here. How cool would it be to have two or three of these, or maybe one for every member of the family and do a different color, do a, a red one and a yellow one and a green one. Of course, I dropped my paintbrush down in the sawdust, so I got a little bit of some sawdust in there, but when it dries, I'll just, I'll just rub those out, that'll be okay. Isn't that beautiful though? That really is, that really is gorgeous. I think it's a lot nicer than this one. This one's okay, but I think this one looks a lot nicer. That's beautiful. All right, do you wanna see, should we do the, uh, 
the matching breadboard, the little breadboard that goes with it. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments and we can do that too. I, um, and we'll make, we can make a set. Wouldn't that be a nice gift though? How simple, easy to make, very something you can do in a couple hours in the shop and I think that looks great. All right. Well, thanks for watching and uh, maybe we'll see you over at the breadboard.